there, welcome back. So sticks and stones may break your bones, but words can change your brain. <laughs> they say words are cheap, but recent neuroscience suggests that our own words, even in casual conversation, can have a very powerful effect on our own brain as well as the brains of people around you. It's true. Your word choice significantly influences the way others hear what you're saying and consequently the way they feel about it. Now I've shared fascinating studies about the power of language before, like this one about the framing effect. Studies show that we don't always make decisions based upon the information that we're given, but rather how that information is presented. When given a choice, we're much more likely to choose a positive option, even when the choices are identical. There's an emotional difference in the way we perceive them. Metaphorically, framing creates a different look and feel in our perception of information. Speaking of metaphorical framing, studies show that the brain thinks in metaphors that are deeply ingrained into our culture. Some linguistic experts maintain that we use a metaphor every 25 words, but because they're so embedded in our language, they often go unnoticed. But metaphors are powerful because they evoke physical sensations in our minds and often distort perceptions in ways that we're not even aware of. For example, in one study, they found that reading the sentence, he had a rough day, instead of he had a bad day, activated the region of the brain associated with texture and touch rather than emotion. Words matter is not just a catchy tagline or a personal statement in a political debate. It's neuroscience. Many of the brain regions that process language also control other parts of your body, such as major organ systems, hormones and neurochemistry, and your immune system. Scientists refer to this as the language network. What's more, we also impact the brain wiring of people around us. Research shows that it doesn't even, we don't even have to hear the words, but merely seeing the words can make immediate changes in another person's nervous system in ways we wouldn't even suspect. For example, imagine you receive a text that says, hey gorgeous, how's your day? It would almost immediately change your heart rate, make you smile, generate oxytocin and serotonin, those happy chemicals that reduce cortisol and engage the prefrontal cortex. On the other hand, if you receive a text that says, we need to talk, you would likely experience an increase in cortisol and all of those physiological signs of the fight or flight response. Whether you intend it to happen or are even aware that it's happening, it doesn't matter. Seeing the words, hearing the words, it's how we're wired. It changes the brain. According to neuroscience research, hearing or speaking positive and optimistic words actually stimulate the prefrontal lobe. This area connects directly to the motor cortex responsible for moving you into action. It also impacts the parietal lobe, and that has everything to do with our perception of self and others. A positive view of yourself creates a bias in seeing the best in others. Conversely, a negative word can create a profound neurological effect by way of the amygdala, releasing stress hormones that actually drive you to make another negative statement and another one. And those negative thoughts result in a negative perception of self, which also creates greater criticism and suspicion of other people. Cognitive scientists have also explored passive sentence structure versus active sentence structure. Passive language seems feckless and invites doubt, where the active phrases are more likely to co convey a sense of accountability and confidence, even when the outcome is exactly the same. For example, when a hotel guest calls the front desk to report a clogged bathroom drain, there's a big difference between hearing, let me see what I can do, and I will definitely take care of that. Or when a diner asks his server if the dish could be prepared differently than how it's listed on the menu, let me find out for you, delivers a much different feeling than, I don't know, but I'll ask the chef. Even a simple response to thank you can create increased emotion in a very common exchange. You're welcome is the standard. Of course is dismissive. But when you respond, it's my pleasure, 
It implies you enjoyed the opportunity to do that thing for that person. So the next time someone says, hey, can you help me out with something? Do you respond, sure? Or do you say, I'd be delighted to help. See how different those two feel? If you want to learn more about how the brain works and how to make it work better, check out my books, Happier Hour with Einstein, and the Full Color Companion Gratitude Journal, available now on Amazon.